Good evening. Britain is facing its biggest public health crisis in a generation, and up to 10,000 people could already have the coronavirus. That's what the Prime Minister and the government's scientific experts announced today as they set out how Britain should tackle the growing threat from the virus. Anyone with a persistent new cough or fever should stay at home for a week. But the measures aren't as severe as those being implemented in other parts of the world. The UK's chief medical advisor said bringing in more drastic measures too early could do more harm than good. It's thought that peak infection rates are still up to three months away, possibly into June. For now, there will be no UK-wide ban on large sporting gatherings. And schools will remain open, unlike in a number of other countries. The new advice today is that if anyone in your family or workplace has a new persistent cough or fever, they should stay at home for seven days. It comes amid another jump in confirmed cases to almost 600. The total number of deaths also rose. Ten people have now died. So far, nearly 30,000 people have been tested. Our first report this evening comes from our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. For self-employed Mike, stuck at home waiting for tests. So there is no statutory sick pay for me. I haven't earned a penny since the start of March. Um, and I'm really sort of now hoping to get on with life. Or Kay, who's been told to wait for her symptoms to go before she goes out again. It's my husband's birthday tomorrow, so we've cancelled our plans and we're going to have an isolation party at home, um, just the two of us. For Johnny, who has symptoms but can't get a test. In some ways, the sense is understandable because I'm young, I'm fit, I'm unlikely to die of this thing, but... At the same time, like this, the the day before I came down of it, I spent it sat next to my 90-year-old granddad watching the England-Wales rugby game. The virus is already affecting many of us. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for coming. From tomorrow, we're in a new phase with some new rules, but not yet the most drastic action. This is the worst public health crisis for a generation. I must level with you, level with the, the British public, um, more families, uh, many more families, are going to lose loved ones before their time. A deeply sober and extremely unusual message to the country. From tomorrow, if you have coronavirus symptoms, however mild, either a new continuous cough or a high temperature, then you should stay at home for at least seven days to protect others and help slow the spread of the disease. We advise all those over 70 with serious medical conditions against going on cruises and we advise against international school trips. How sure are you that the approach you're taking, holding back from some of the more drastic measures, is the right one? Asking elderly people to stay at home, uh, that's one thing that you've really uh, got to time uh, as... as uh, Chris and Patrick have been explaining uh, so that it coincides with the period at which the epidemic is really at its, at its peak. People start off with the best of intentions but enthusiasm at a certain point starts to flag. If you start too early and then people's enthusiasm runs out just about the peak, which is exactly the time that we want people to be doing these interventions, that is actually not a productive way to do it. But hang on. In Scotland, the First Minister has pushed further. Mass gatherings require to be policed. They require to have emergency ambulance cover. We are minded now that we will advise the cancellation, also from the start of next week, of mass gatherings of 500 people or more. And that is principally to protect the resilience of our frontline workers. And listen to this, Ireland's leader taking more drastic steps already. Schools, colleges and childcare facilities will close from tomorrow. Where possible, teaching will be done online or remotely. Cultural institutions will close as well. Our advice is that all indoor mass gatherings of more than 100 people and outdoor mass gatherings of more than 500 people should be cancelled. Number 10 is well aware. Outwardly, they're taking a less stringent approach than some other countries, even our near neighbours. But that is based on what they say is the best scientific evidence they have. In the genuine belief that we are in this for the long haul, perhaps three months from the worst. And more draconian measures will only have an effect if they're taken at the right time. Rushing into drastic action might not be the safest route. Are we too slow to be 
taking measures now. Should schools be shut? Above all else, this pandemic means the first job is to protect the nation's health. But this is also a test of the political judgment and competence of those in charge. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. The Prime Minister said the most important task was to protect elderly and vulnerable people when infections peak. The most dangerous period is still some weeks away. Our special correspondent Lucy Manning has been talking to some of those who are most at risk. The older generation, the workers, the vulnerable, the delay phase will mean changes for everybody's lives. Older people are most at risk. The advice today is just to protect themselves. But at Chelmsford's Age Concern Lunch Club, the worries are, will they be asked to stay in more? Should they be staying in more? I don't want to. I think it finished me off. Lillian Gowers is 84. This is what keeps me going. Really does. Eating with people and seeing people. Mother and daughter Tracy and Sue Mortimer have already changed their behaviour. Well, I've basically locked her down. That way she's not on buses, touching things, touching handrails. You know, it's, it's about battening down the hatches, I thought. Scary. Yeah, it is scary. Scary. <laughs> it's not just a cold. It's, to me, that would be a severe flu. To my mum, that would be a fatal flu. And people aren't getting it. There are difficult conversations going on in families across the country. People telling parents and grandparents they need to change their behaviour and follow the government advice. Soon life at home and at work is going to look very different for some weeks, even months. For workers, a cough or temperature means stay home for a week. At this creative agency in Brentwood, business has been affected. The government not yet telling firms everyone should work from home but they're ready. I think too much of a situation where we act too soon will have a negative impact. So I believe that the government is doing the right thing at the moment, but I think that big decisions will be, will be made over the next few weeks um, and we will have to adapt. And the vulnerable are already suffering. Amy Emery has multiple sclerosis. Her treatment weakens her immune system, so it's been delayed. As I am at a high risk category of contracting the disease, like the virus, I don't think that I would want to even leave my house at the moment, really, because it is quite scary. A Prime Minister warning many more families will lose loved ones before their time. Perhaps the most sobering message this country will hear. Lucy Manning, BBC News, Essex. Well, with the government moving into the delay phase of its plan to tackle coronavirus, what is the thinking behind today's measures and the impact on the NHS? Our health editor, Hugh Pym, reports. Taking precautions, regular disinfecting on London Underground to try to reduce the virus risk. Today we learned the peak of the epidemic could be three months away with many more cases. So what can people who are infected expect? Some of the people on the group that I was skiing with had fallen ill. Andrew tested positive after a skiing holiday in Italy and is now self-isolating at home till he recovers. What are the symptoms? What does it feel like having the virus? I've had worse flu, without a doubt. Um, I'd say the most debilitating aspect is the uncontrollable coughing. Um, that, that is probably the worst bit. The rest of it, the fevers, is no different to a normal flu-type symptoms. And I'd say it's not to be worried about. This is what the government thinks would be the peak number of cases without new measures, late spring and well above NHS bed capacity. With the interventions, it's hoping to flatten the peak and delay it. So we're trying to reduce the number of cases at any one time. That's very important for NHS in order to make the NHS able to cope with this. And it's also important because it pushes it out into summer months where the NHS is less busy. And there are he said reducing virus cases much more would be difficult, but that might not be a bad thing. It's not possible to stop everybody getting it. And it's also actually not desirable because you want some immunity in the population. We need to have immunity to protect ourselves from this in the future. Medical authorities have written to doctors today, warning them there'll be extreme pressure and they might have to work in unfamiliar areas. 
Many are concerned for their patients and their own health. My colleagues, the nursing staff and everybody in the intensive care are very much in the front line um, and are at risk of, of contracting the illness, which may be mild or may be severe, um, from patients they treat. So it is something that really does focus the mind and is a great concern for us at the moment. There was no specific new advice for older people at home and others who are vulnerable to the virus. Age UK supports the government's approach but has called for more detailed guidance. People who are in particularly vulnerable situations, perhaps because they're living with somebody who's at risk, maybe they've had a cancer treatment, maybe they're an older person and they're caring for them, I think people like that do need some more advice and they're bound to be anxious. The new instruction to people to stay away from work if they have symptoms will affect many businesses. This car repair centre in Suffolk already takes employees' temperatures twice a day. If they're too high, they're sent home. All employers will now be keeping a close eye on their staff's health. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, is here with me now. So many countries, France, Ireland among them, shutting their schools. Many asking here why that's not happening. The government is adamant that it's being led by the science and the scientific advice is that unless you were to shut all schools for three months, it would barely have any impact on suppressing the epidemic. And they don't think banning mass gatherings at this stage would have much effect either. What the government is relying on is altruism and that means self-isolating for seven days if you have a cough or a high temperature and eventually um, it will ask whole families to isolate for 14 days if one person in that household um, is infected. Um, but that's not coming yet, nor is asking the elderly or those with underlying health conditions to isolate themselves, because otherwise that might have to be for months. And we heard today that peak infection rates may not be till May, June even. Is the NHS ready for this? Well, there's no doubt that the NHS, especially intensive care, is in for a rocky period. Um, most people will get a mild illness, four out of five, but one in 20 may need critical care. The main therapy is oxygen. They may need a ventilator. Now, that's where we've seen the biggest pressures on hospitals in Italy and China. Now, the big unknown is what proportion of the UK population are going to get this? And we simply don't know that yet, so we don't know what the pressure will be. But the aim now is not to completely suppress the epidemic. We need to start building up what's called herd immunity. But a final point, Sophie, it's worth stressing that 99 out of 100 people who get this will survive it, but it's going to be a bumpy, bumpy few months. Fergus Walsh. Thank you. Well, there's been turmoil on stock markets around the world today. The FTSE had its worst days trading in more than 30 years, closing nearly 11% down. The huge sell-off was prompted by general fears of the impact the pandemic is having on the global economy and a decision overnight by President Trump to announce restrictions on travel between continental Europe and the US. This evening, a state of emergency has been declared in New York and Broadway is being shut down for a month. Our North America correspondent Nick Bryant is there. Sophie, I'm on Broadway right now. The Great White Way will go dark for the next four weeks. Disneyland in California has just announced it's shutting its doors. New York City has declared this state of emergency. We began the day in the suburbs of this great metropolis where the military has been deployed to help the local community. The National Guard on the streets of American suburbia, here not to maintain public order, but to safeguard public health. Boots on the ground for a mercy mission. How many kids? Got it. One. One kid. Providing food to needy families whose children have stopped getting free meals because of the closure of the schools. People here are getting sick and they're fretful. I think people are worried, I think people are nervous, but the idea is um, with these resources that are available, it's about co uh, coming together and maybe and perhaps it will ease a lot of people's uh, nerves. New Rochelle on the outskirts of New York City has now become ground zero in America's coronavirus outbreak. It's not yet in lockdown, there's still freedom of movement, but they've created a containment area where schools, colleges, houses of worship will be shut for the next two weeks. Residents here complain the Trump administration hasn't done enough, especially with testing people for the virus. I think that they're approaching this situation uh, very slowly and it's not fair to the communities that are infected. It's not. I think they need to do more, produce more tests as fast as possible. 
New Rochelle is a satellite town and the fear is people who commute to Manhattan will fuel the contagion. Further down the tracks they're worried the subway system could become a super spreader so they've been disinfecting turnstiles and trains. But the Big Apple has already had more than 50 cases. President Trump is about to address the nation. The Trump White House has been accused of minimizing the crisis and the shock announcement from the Oval Office last night of a European travel ban only added to the confusion. We made a life-saving move with early action on China. Now we must take the same action with Europe. We will not delay. I will never hesitate to take any necessary steps to protect the lives, health and safety of the American people. At European airports, the rush to beat the travel ban, which comes into effect tomorrow, but doesn't include the UK. It was announced without consultation with the European Union and without even alerting US airlines. At the opening bell on the New York Stock Exchange, they were bumping elbows, that new coronavirus greeting. But soon it was head in the hands as the markets nosedived in response to Donald Trump's speech. It was the worst day since the crash of 1987. So the president who promised to make America great again is struggling with his biggest crisis yet of trying to keep it healthy. Nick Bryant, BBC News, New York. Our economics editor, Faisal Islam, is here another terrible day for the markets. Are we in this now for the long haul? Well, it certainly was a torrid day on global markets after those comments from the US president. And we can see some of the numbers. This uh, was focused on Europe, where, of course, it directly affected travel companies, airlines and the like. And you can see there the DAX, that's the German index, down 12 percent. The Italian index uh, at the bottom there down 17 percent. The FTSE down 11 percent. That is the second worst percentage fall on record, around the same as Black Monday, that fall. And the 10 percent fall, as we've been hearing in the Dow Jones, that's despite the fact the US authorities, the Federal Reserve, put in a trillion dollars worth of uh, funding to get the markets going again, uh, essentially. And what you have here, it's not the same as the financial crisis 10 years ago, where the plumbing of the financial system wasn't really working. This uh, markets are meant to price risk, and this is showing that they see the risks of this coronavirus pandemic now affecting companies, affecting their cash flow, affecting their ability, some of them to stay in existence, frankly. And that's why they're being marked down, not just on share markets, but also on corporate markets. And I think the thing is here is that they're assessing the risks and it doesn't help when the people expect, expect you expect to dampen down those risks. World leaders seem to act in a way that exacerbates them. Faisal, thank you. Well, tonight the French president addressed the nation and announced that all nurseries, schools and universities will be closed in France from Monday, calling the outbreak the nation's worst public health crisis in a century. Elsewhere, the Czech Republic has declared a state of emergency for 30 days. It's closing its borders to travellers crossing from Germany and Austria. In Germany, the elderly and their families have been advised to avoid public transport, to stop hugging people and to avoid large public events. Norway is also shutting schools and nurseries and tonight Belgium and Portugal have said they are doing the same. Well, four towns in the northeast of Spain have tonight been put under quarantine, at first in Spain, where the number of cases has soared to more than 3,000. Around a third of them are in the capital, Madrid. 84 people have now died. From Madrid, our Europe correspondent Damien Grammaticus reports. Inside this Madrid hospital are 100 COVID-19 patients. Spain may be just a week or so behind Italy, infections accelerating, by almost a thousand on yesterday. The medics on the front line starting to struggle. My feeling is we should be one step ahead of this crisis instead of two steps behind. People working here in this moment, they don't have enough protective equipment, so more health workers are facing a risk of falling ill. And falling ill too, the lady in black kissing Spain's queen last week. She's a government minister, but it's now known she's infected. So the Queen and Spain's King, who met Emmanuel Macron yesterday, have also had to be tested. And Spain's Prime Minister is keeping his distance. Journalists today forced to ask questions by video link from his car park. He's called for social discipline, but not shutdowns. And this is one of the worst affected areas around Madrid. But what strikes you when you're here is how many people are out on the streets. Spain's government is issuing warnings, but unlike Italy, 
it's not yet shutting down areas like this. This is an infection hotspot, but tour groups of pensioners at high risk have still been coming. The bars and restaurants open. The people here doesn't, doesn't care. In the bars, taking the, taking the beers, uh, the, th the cinema, in one region all closed, in another region all open, it's not normal. So everybody, two weeks in house. And, and, we, and we can cut the, the problem. Here, we used to have the thermometers. Some are scared the local pharmacist is out of thermometers. As you can see, they are empty right now. And down to his last box of sanitizer. This is all you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just last one. one delivery. And the next one is coming? Uh, <laughs> we don't know. Don't know when. Outside, we found these British language students have all just booked flights home. Us two going tomorrow, you're yeah, going Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Monday. Because yeah. of the virus? Yeah. 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 Well, and because they've cancelled all their classes. So is Spain doing too little, too late? The fear this place could, like parts of Italy, be overburdened in just a few days' time. Dame Grammaticus, BBC News, Madrid. Let's take a look at some of today's other news now. And the Ministry of Defence has named the British servicewoman killed in a missile attack in Iraq yesterday as 26-year-old Lance Corporal Brody Gillen. She was described by her squadron leader as an utterly professional soldier, an outstanding medic and loyal friend. And the French-born chef and restaurateur Michel Roux has died. He was 78 and had been suffering from a lung condition. The chef founded his London restaurant Le Gavroche in 1967 and it became the first in London to receive three Michelin stars. Back to the coronavirus pandemic now and its impact on sporting fixtures around the world is continuing to grow. Manchester City's Champions League game at home to Real Madrid has been cancelled and now there are real concerns about the future of this summer's European Championship being held across the continent. Our sports editor Dan Roan is in Manchester outside the Etihad Stadium for us. Dan. Sophie, in the last few moments, Arsenal Football Club have announced that their head coach, Mikel Arteta, has tested positive for coronavirus and their entire squad will now have to go into self-isolation. It puts huge doubt, of course, on their match this weekend against Brighton. It came this evening, just minutes after the Premier League, in fact, ironically, had announced that all of their fixtures this weekend would go ahead as planned. And the news that Benjamin Mendy, a defender here at Manchester City, had to go into self-isolation today because a member of his family had shown symptoms for the virus and was also in hospital. The impact on football is growing, of course. Today, UEFA announced that next week they may well postpone uh, Euro 2020, no less. The, the National European Championships do take place this summer until next year. But nonetheless, despite mounting pressure, as I say, both the Premier League and the EFL announced that this weekend's fixtures would go ahead as planned. It's been a day like no other. Tennis tours, the NBA basketball, the Australian Grand Prix, all postponed. And of course, there's a lot more to come in Britain, however. Sport continues with Cheltenham. Today, the government said they would look now at perhaps cancelling sporting fixtures in the future, but rapidly sports having to face up to a closure unprecedented in peacetime. Dan, thank you. Well, throughout the day, the BBC has received nearly 15,000 questions on coronavirus. Our health correspondent, Sophie Hutchinson, has been taking a look at some of your most common concerns. My dad's got a uh, chronic lung disease, uh, COPD, and I would like to know how dangerous is coronavirus for people like him. For anyone with a lung condition such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma, there is a raised risk from the coronavirus. Charities are advising that people take any medication they might need with them at all time and really manage their conditions. The virus is dangerous because it attacks the tissues and airways deep inside the lungs. I'm wondering if once I've had the illness and if I thankfully um, get over it, um, I'll then be safe because I'll be immune. Is that the case? Well, the truth is we don't know, but it seems highly unlikely that you could get the coronavirus more than once. There have been a small number of reports from China of people who say they've had it twice. But usually with a virus, once you've recovered, you have antibodies and they protect you in case you come into contact with another infected person. I just wanted to know how long the coronavirus lasted on various surfaces. 
<laughs> if somebody infected with the virus coughs in their hand and then touches, say, this cash machine, it's possible that it could become contaminated. And that's the same for this bank card and this money. It's estimated that it takes up to 72 hours for the virus to die on a hard surface, but it's slightly quicker on something like fabric. A huge amount is still not known. The first cases of the virus emerged just three months ago. But perhaps the best advice is the simplest. Wash your hands with soap for 20 seconds. Cough or sneeze into a tissue. If you don't have a tissue, use your sleeve. Throw tissues in the bin. Try not to touch your face and avoid close contact with people who are unwell. For most people, this coronavirus infection will be mild, but for a small proportion, it is much more serious. These are uncertain times and we don't yet have all the answers. Sophie Hutchinson, BBC News.